Uh, Frederick, just uh, would you have say two minutes just to react for the uh, for the comments, to react for the legal remarks for your economic, but just two minutes, let's say, okay? Um, what I would like to say about um, perception becomes reality is um, in the debate on posting, but also with regard to the overall coordination rules, I think there was a missed opportunity, perhaps of the Commission, to publish all the figures they already have. For instance, when you know that um, the export of family benefits is only equal to 0.3% of the total spending by the UK on family benefits, 0.3% and such a debate and such a misperception, well, as Commission, you have to defend yourself and you can do that with the figures you have. And I think this was really a missed opportunity in this debate. Okay, thank you. So, Catherine, maybe it's your turn. Would you like to say who is going to win, who is going to lose, or some other perceptions of yours? Thank you. Posted workers, of course. Yeah. Because uh, posting of workers is not a major issue from where I come from, it's nevertheless, it's part of the perception that migration has become a major issue in the um, UK. Now, the problem is that the perception and reality are different things at the macro level, because at the macro level, the UK has got the highest employment rate of any member state at the moment, even with up to three million EU migrants, migrant workers and some posted workers. And so, although the reality is that actually, all the evidence suggests that migration is a very good thing for the economy, it brings in about three and a half billion in terms of gross benefit to the UK economy, the social perception is totally different. And the social perception is that the character of local communities is being changed. And while at a macro level, the benefit to the country is large, if you come from a declining part of the country, you do not see that macro benefit. And that's one of the reasons why London and Cambridge and the big university cities all voted to remain, but the rest of the country voted to leave, even those parts of the country which have very little migration, because the fear and perception is that migration harms local communities. And if you're in a declining community, the fact that the cake is already very small, the cake being housing, the cake being other public services, you are very reluctant to share that cake with a wider group of people. And that's why it's really important to try and get some data out there and also not to look at this issue in isolation, but to see it in connection with how regional funds are being spent in order to try and assist those communities which are really suffering, that have not benefited from uh, Europeanization and globalization. Okay, so Mike, two minutes for you just to summarize for the last reaction for the <laughs> introductions. Well, summary is difficult, uh, as you already noticed. <laughs> yeah, I know, that's the reality, but not, uh, not the perception of it. <laughs> but I think Some few words up from you? Uh, yeah, I, okay. I, what I perhaps would like to add, but that is contrary to your suggestion that I would do a summary, is um, something I discussed with Marek. Because uh, if you say perceptions should be taken seriously, as I say, you should also take the perception seriously, which seems to be, uh, um, well, at least a major perception in, in sending countries, and that is that it is fair that it, you can use your comparative advantage uh, being uh, low labor costs. And um, there I have the impression that a different message was brought uh, at the moment uh, that we had the enlargement to uh, uh, the public in uh, sending countries and to the public in receiving countries. As Catherine already noticed, we had transitional regimes, which was uh, 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 actually too much of a surprise, probably, in sending countries, because they had gotten the message that they could come to our labor market. So here already, the perceptions started to differ, and, and voters, you could say, at the end of the day, we are all voters also, 
uh, ha had, had different uh, ex uh, expectations. Uh, and this still uh, continues, this thing, because in, in, in the receiving countries, people uh, do not have a problem uh, in, uh, when a Polish plumber would come to the Netherlands and uh, find a job because he's better, but they have a problem when this is on unequal terms. And especially they have this problem when the size grows and the country itself is in economic crisis. And because the receiving countries never got the message that this was the, the, the idea of competition, and it's also not resembled in our own countries, where we also have a mandatory rules uh, which limit competition between uh, companies, the same as in Belgium, it, it just doesn't uh, come over. But it, in the other part, so in the, in the sending part, I think um, something interesting is that there was also another discussion about dumping, and that is what is called sometimes good dumping. So there was also a perception of unfairness, and that was that uh, big uh, uh, companies uh, with deep pockets could compete uh, companies uh, out here and even sometimes whole sectors. Um, so perhaps we should, uh, perhaps leave it to the politicians of course, but not always isolate topics but see it also more in a broad picture because I think here you, there has to be something repaired uh, in, in, in this sphere and perhaps there should also be a look then to uh, the blind spot the EU uh, often takes within EU and not vis-a-vis uh, -vis third countries actually uh, when it comes when it comes through parallel uh, import of goods and and all kind of uh, issues on that side of the coin. Thank you. Okay, so thank you very much.